Hello again, YouTubers, on with SpongeBob101 back here again on the SpongeBob channel. In this video, we will be reviewing The Patrick Star Show Episode 18, The Patterfly Effect, and A Space Affair to Remember. As Hypnosis states, Patrick messes with this space time continuum. And also, while Cecil and Bunny celebrate their anniversary in outer space, Patrick and Squidina throw a house party. Let's dive right in. The Patterfly Effect is one of the most interesting Patrick Star Show episodes thus far for me, and it starts out fairly normal actually for Patrick, where he wakes up, loses his head, and then tries to go back to sleep by slamming a hammer on himself while he's standing on a waffle maker. Yeah, fairly normal indeed. At the breakfast table, Bunny reveals that her childhood dream was to be a race car driver, but before she finishes her sentence, Patrick somehow has massive conviction to make sure that his mom gets her dream fulfilled. He tapes her mouth shut and storms out in true mood swing fashion and uses the time closet to travel back in time to 30 years ago in Klopnod, where Patrick enacts his plan to make Bunny become not a race car driver, but a race car. Yeah, <laughs> the scene where Bunny was forced to literally run to race the race car was just sad and a montage then plays featuring Patrick training Bunny and then providing her with parts to make herself a literal vehicle that I did not see coming. A really nice reference to Spongebob comics was included here with Patrick reading it upside down and laughing at it while Bunny was fixing herself into a race car. This culminates in Bunny winning first place at the race. Pretty great, right? How could anything possibly go wrong? Patrick returns to the present where he is freaked out by the fact that Squidina's legs have now been replaced with wheels and his own legs have been replaced with tank treads. Quite funny, but Patrick ain't having any of it. Turns out Bunny ended up as a street sweeper after 30 years. What a fall from grace that is. Also, it doesn't make much sense since the race car part of her body was only accessory. How could her children then have mechanical parts for legs? Anyways, in order to fix his mistake, Patrick returns to the past to sternly warn Bunny not to be a race car. And then he proceeds to destroy stuff along the way, including what seems to be the Mona Lisa and a fire hydrant on the way to the time closet door. The result? Well, of course, the world he returns to is continuously ablaze. I can't figure out how destroying that one fire hydrant led to that, but Patrick then starts going to the past again and again to fix things, and time and time again, he messes something up. Eventually, he gets to a timeline where everything looks normal, but the time is faster by 15 minutes. That's also not the worst part. The problem lies with the fact that the time closet was now a normal closet filled with Bunny's clothes. So this starts a whole series of scenes whereupon Squadina's advice on how a time machine should work, Patrick enrolls himself at the Bikini Bottom Institute of Technology, yes, a reference to MIT there, to study and gain what it takes to invent a time travel machine. And it does turn out pretty well. Patrick gets his degree, a hairdo and mustache and returns home to build a time closet which brings him to the moment he originally wanted to enter the time closet for the first time at the beginning of the episode in order to stop himself from entering the time closet to change the fabric of history. In true idiotic fashion, however, his past self suggests a time travel back 15 minutes ago to get breakfast because he hears Patrick's tummy rumbling. And original Patrick Einstein agrees. The episode ends with both Patrick's turning into eggs on the frying pan in Bunny's kitchen. What a silly ending for, well, a silly character, right? I'd say the plot is really mind-blowing. It was heartwarming to watch Patrick uh, show care for his mother, right? Trying his best to train Bunny to be a racer, although the outcome was ridiculous. Also, watching Patrick putting his all into absorbing knowledge and then inventing his own time closet as Patrick, what I call Einstein here, pretty impressive, you know? Patrick really has smarts in there, pretty sure. He just doesn't activate it. And his brain is, you know, underrated, okay? So a lot of stuff was very silly, but this is the Patrick Star show after all. Not much really has to make sense. It just has to be cool, right? So I give the plot 8 out of 10. In terms of animation, I'd say it gets 8 out of 10 as well. We got to see plenty of different outcomes as a result of Patrick messing with time, plus the core portions of Training Bunny and Patrick becoming intelligent was so fun to watch. Also, can't forget the explosions, man, they had to put it in there. They're putting it in like almost every episode nowadays. 
Unique Characteristics gets 8 out of 10. The idea of time travel is one of my favorite ideas to be implemented in an episode, and this episode takes full advantage of both the risk of meddling with the past and Patrick's typical foolishness and to some extent his carelessness. Adding in random references like Spongebob comics was a huge plus to an already fairly unique style of episode. Overall, the Patterfly Effect gets 24 out of 30 from me. Next up, we have A Space Affair to Remember. This title itself is kind of strange, but well, let's take a look here. This one starts out strong right out of the gate with Patrick, Squidina, and Tinkle surprising Cecil and Bunny in their room with an all-expenses-paid trip to ancient Greece. It turns out the true purpose of their actions is so they can just host a house party without their parents being there. A tear created while Patrick is laughing has other plans and changes the destination to space. Why a tear would do that is beyond me, but well, it had to happen somehow, right? Patrick, not knowing about the change, hits the teleport button and Bunny and Cecil find themselves aboard a spaceship that's hosting the 1000th annual weird alien contest where the prize is a dinner for two and of course they decide to take part. It doesn't make sense here because in space everyone's an alien. <laughs> the episode goes back and forth between the spaceship and the Star Family house where everything's set up for a nice small house party with Spongebob, Pearl, and Elwood but suddenly a whole bunch of starfish barbarians crash the party and chaos ensues. Meanwhile, round one of the weird alien contest is a small competition. Bunny and Cecil get beat. Meanwhile, Grandpa returns home to the horror of the party goers but he soon joins the party and everyone continues partying. So round two of the contest is a cooking competition where Cecil and Bunny have to make a dish using a human, like a live human. I don't really think this is funny, uh, but it is what it is. The winner was one of the humans thanks to a spillage caused by Cecil, but she ends up getting eaten by the judge as well. That sounds wrong. And then we come to the final round, a dance-off, where Bunny and Cecil cause an explosion revealing that they're actually two people or two aliens instead of one, or two aliens instead of one alien with two heads. Subtle throwback here to I Heart Dancing in the main series. But the crowd erupts in cheers after seeing how weird they look, and they take first prize. Upon hearing that there are more creatures like Bunny and Cecil out there, Dale Gobbler, the host, and the aliens send a UFO to capture all of the party goers in the star residence, except Bubble Bass, or to Bubble Bass's benefit, because Bubble Bass was trying to squeeze himself in and he ends up being the only one getting away. But he has his butt sliced off by the UFO beam though, so ouch. His butt also gets mistaken for ham later by Cecil which was both disgusting and hilarious at the same time. Patrick and Squidina are surprised to see that their parents aren't angry at them for hosting the house party since they really enjoy their anniversary at the contest in space. The judge alien swallows them all and the episode ends with everyone just deciding to continue partying in the belly of the judge alien. I'd say this episode was fairly average. There were quite a few parts that were ridiculous, from the storming of the star residence to the human cooking round, and the overall desire to celebrate Cecil and Bunny's anniversary was sort of swept under the rug except for the very start and the very end. Now there were some nice scenes with Spongebob and Pearl, as well as Grandpat trying to be hip like Cannonball Jenkins or something and getting in on the party, but nothing was super duper awesome about the episode. Plot gets 6 out of 10 in my opinion. Animation gets 8 out of 10. Now the crew did a really good job in designing the spaceship environment and all the aliens with varying characteristics, including the one that was smiling like crazy and the two-headed one. Also, the party scenes were great, but nothing beats Bubble Bass getting his behind sliced off by the UFO beam. That was just epic. And getting it mistaken by for Ham too. Unique characteristics gets 7 out of 10. The combination of space and the wedding anniversary is a strange one. If each had been a focus of a single episode, I Thing they do fine. Nonetheless, the whole idea of the weird alien contest or just contests in general isn't a common thing in Spongebob so I think it was okay. The returning characters and inclusion of Spongebob and Pearl to be specific was really nice. Overall, A Space Affair to Remember gets 21 out of 30 from me. So that's about it for this review. Let me know in the comments box below what you guys thought about these two episodes. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and I'll see you guys in the next SpongeBob video coming real soon. Till then, bye!